okay? Pissed me off, man. I was making a video, I was making a point. Somebody called me on my phone, can you believe it? And you're like, okay, I mean, I'm talking, I was doing a Bible study. Let me just kind of bring you up to date. This is this guy. This is Hebrews. This is just showing you some Bible. I know you're t- too busy for that. Me too. All right. This guy here, he said this. This is Paul. He says, let us fearlessly and confidently and boldly. Think about that. Like, What if, what if those were yoga poses? Fearlessly. Get into your most fearless, confident, bold, physical position. What would that look like? Draw near the throne of grace. Let us fearlessly and confidently and boldly draw near to the throne of grace, the throne of God's unmerited favor to us sinners, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in good time for every need, appropriate help, and well-timed help coming just when we need it. Man, that's one of those like, hmm. Now who's this Joshua and Caleb guy? Well, you know, sometimes, you know, if you kind of, I guess I gotta go talk about Joshua and Caleb. I guess I'm gonna go to, I think it's Numbers 13. You're like, Numbers what? I'm gonna show you. It's Numbers 13. Some grasshopper talk. See, this is how most people, you know, there's not a lot of, you know, this is sort of, this is in the book of Numbers. Basically, Israel's in a kind of a hard time. And they're like, dude, who's going to feed us? Let's go back to jail. Let's go back to prison. Let's go back to Pharaoh. And God's like, no, move forward. Keep moving forward. And Numbers 14, it says, it goes, verse 31 says, But his fellow scout says, We are not able to go up against the people. I mean, they're basically bringing an evil report. An evil, has anybody ever brought an evil report against you or a, a report of doubt? A report of like, oh my goodness. You should see his shirt on your chair. He's talking about Jesus. It's a, he's evil. And then he's like, you know what? See, isn't it better for us to go back to Egypt? And Egypt's a metaphor, guys. And so we kind of break it open a little bit. Is God, God's people were in bondage, and then he's moving them out. And he's moving them out in like the real world stuff. Like this isn't like reality TV stuff wherever all these problems are solved in like 18 minutes and it's not like that. I mean this is this is the story of Israel being moved out of bondage. And what's interesting is that they keep wanting to go back to it. They keep wanting to go back to it. Why? Why do they want to go back to it? Because they simply want to and they're like, oh remember when we had the good, you know, it's like, isn't it interesting how it's always easy to go back, like go back to the old relationship that didn't work, to go back to the old religion that didn't work, to go back to the old. It's so easy to go back. That's why most people do it. But to move forward. And maybe you're the only one in your family that's going to move forward. You know, it could be, you know, you pick your poison, you know, Maybe you're going to be the first one in your in your family to do something. And your family sometimes is, and you'll see that theme where God will sometimes separate you from your family even early. In fact, if you really want to get biblical, you'll see where God separates boys from their families really early to kind of almost consecrate them. You kind of, all right, this this one right here, you know. Don't get me on that stuff and how God will work through things like that. But Mark 8, I'm going to close on this. I'm going to try to make these brief because, you know, I know the thing about this medium of the medium of YouTube is short attention spans. And I'm the same way. I mean, who wants to watch 
a long video. Especially about a guy showing you his Bible. Like, you want to see Fibonacci's Bible? It says right here that, it says, My word that goes out of my mouth, it shall not return void, and it shall accomplish that which I plead, and it will prosper. And, and that God's, God's word, you know, it, it's powerful. It's effective. And so then we, if you want to really, really kind of get into things, you can go to Mark 4. If I can find Mark 4 on your Mark, get set. This is so important. Because this is this is a, a process or a pattern that I highly recommend that you um, kind of get familiar with. That there's that you the sower sows the word. See it? Sower sows the word. He's just hanging out there whistling. He's just sowing. And then something happens as Satan comes at once by force to take the message. Some of them, some of that seed goes different places. Some of these guys, they fall in hearts that are offended, indignant, resentful. People just like me. There they are, boom. Then there's another group of people. The other group of people says the cares and the anxieties of the world will suffocate the word. So see the process here? So this this happens and then this happens and then it falls on your heart of resentment. And this is why indignancy and resentments and angers need to be, um, that's why they're so important. And then you can go to Vegas, dude. This is where everybody wants to be, if they want to be really honest. They want to be fat, happy Vegas, holla. But it, their word is suffocated. And with that word, they're, the word of God is out of their life. And so they're just running on, they're self-propelled, basically. Then when shit happens, they don't know this. That God is victorious over the world. And that we're supposed to live in God and dwell. And that as we dwell, that there's something about dwelling in God that's important. Can I show me a real life example of it? I don't even get it. All right, well, you know, it's, the Bible says that the. Hebrews 13. So you're like, what am I going to do? You ever have those days where you're like, well, I don't know, maybe you need to just let love. Maybe you just need to let love. You know? Or maybe in your life, it's more about this. Man, I, I got high recently and I had a... A, like that, a personified psychedelic, like, dude. Like, dude. Dude. Man, if we would just, maybe I should start like a cannabis ayahuasca mushroom church filing federally protected statuses of religion and bringing ayahuasca, shrooms, and cannabis. And basically, I don't know, what, what should I call it? The Deuteronomy 424? Or how about the 420? I wonder if people would know. No, you're like, God's a consuming fire. Well, yes. And once I got high, like, uh, you know, when was it? I think it was yesterday morning. Man, and I had a over, I'm like, like, dude, you don't, we don't understand. Like, dude, this is supreme, like, like, anyway. And that supreme says things like this. For God himself says, I will not. And then he even starts repeating himself. He starts repeating himself. He starts repeating himself. He starts saying the same thing. And he says, for God himself says, I will not in any way fail you nor give you up or leave you without support. I will not. I will not. I will not in any way leave you helpless. I will not even relax my hold on you. Assuredly not. So take comfort and encourage and be confident. Again, it's easy, easy to hear it. 
take comfort and be encouraged and confidently and boldly say. And sometimes just for, if you're like me, just to be obedient to that, I'm just literally saying those words. The Lord is my helper. I will not be seized with alarm. I will not fear or be terrified. What can man do? And sometimes I literally just say, the Lord is my helper. Why? Why do I say that? Well, because this is too long. I will not, I will not, I will not, I will not. That's too long. And sometimes, if you're like me, I know God's powerful. I know He's wise. But sometimes I struggle with my own story. My own story will suffocate. My own experiences, uh, maybe where humans weren't that good to me, I struggle with God's goodness. But man, I understand God's power and His wisdom. But man, will He be good to Jonathan? So I have to kind of go old, old school, guys. The Lord is my helper. I will not, I will not, I will not relax my hold. I will sh- surely not. And I, I do that because the Bible says that the Word is alive. It's self-fulfilling. It's active. And it doesn't return void. And sometimes you just got to do silly things. Here it says, Because of faith, also Sarah received physical power to conceive a child. I mean, Sarah got busy. I mean, dude, sometimes faith means you're fucking. It's because of faith. Sarah herself received physical power to conceive a child, even when she was long past the age, because she considered God, who had given her the promise to be reliable and trustworthy to His Word. Man, there's so much in there. And you know the first thing? If you're like me, you're going to hear that. You're going to be all self condemnation ill you'd be like you know there's so much I need no be nice be gentle with yourself be compassionate find something in here and just let love maybe there's something in here that you're like you know what I'm going to do it Fibonacci's right I'm going to say the Lord is my helper I'm going to I guess God is he's trustworthy and reliable to his word okay I'll believe that. He will not, he will not, he will not, he will not let me down. All right, you guys be good. Hey, man. This song, this, this, really? All right, guys, Buenos Essay. Email me, Americana417 at gmail.com. If you like my videos, drop me some in and out Starbucks. Seriously, next time you go to Starbucks, whatever you spend there, drop Fibonacci. You'd be like, nigga, make me think. Um, and then um, also, if you leave the comments, let me know where you're from. We're growing. I think last night, I think we got up to like five five views last night. Maybe maybe eight. Man, that'd be great. Oh yeah, you know, and I was watching Joe Rogan's stuff, and of course he had somebody on there, and he had like 19.2 million followers. That Dan Brazilian guy. I love Joe Rogan. Man, that made me like so discouraged. You know, like 19.2. So I guess I'm going to, you know what, I should do like a Fibonacci, Dan, was it Dan Brazilian? You know, we basically have naked chicks and guns. I don't really like guns. I should do, I, I should do like Solomon's Temple. You know, basically we just talk about the wisdom of God with naked women. That's what we should do. Fibonacci, Solomon Temple. Kind of copy and maybe I can get up to like 5 million views. You're like, oh my goodness, here's a naked girl just like Solomon had in his palace because he pursued the Lord. And he likes wisdom, and wisdom is good. And sometimes wisdom makes you open books, and you need to read more books and turn off Fox News and all that bullshit. Like that. You're like, oh my goodness, I can't believe you just said it. Because Fox News is awesome. No, it's not. That's all propaganda. Bullshit. It's, a, it's all theater. It's all theater. Nobody's really solving problems, except Fibonacci. Tell me the last problem the government solved. Thank you. Gitmo, Fourth Amendment, what has Obama done? Come on, guys. African-American unemployment is 30%. What the fuck? And we're talking about Donald Trump liking women. Are you kidding me? Hashtag MRI. Are you guys be good? Email me at conference at gmail.com.